The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Greg Gorga, and Greg is the Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, great to be here again. Oh gosh, I'm so glad you're here, <laughs> and I can hardly wait to hear what you've got up your sleeve now, what's happening at the oh, Maritime Museum. Oh, always something going on at the museum. Uh, it's just been a, a busy, busy period and getting busier all the time. So, you know, we're constantly doing new exhibits. Our current, uh, our current permanent exhibit, the newest one, is the history of oil in the Santa Barbara Channel. Wow. Going way back to the Chumash who used asphaltum to uh, make their plank canoes, the tamales, and of course the carry water, uh, to the 69 oil spill and everything in between. You know, the, the world's first offshore wells were right here in Summerlin. Oh, gosh. Uh, yep. And if you ever see a picture of Summerlin 100 plus years ago, there's 100 oil platforms sticking out in the water. So A hundred? A hundred or more, yeah. And same thing at Elwood. That's why the Japanese uh, shelled up there after Pearl Harbor. So that exhibit is, uh, is, is in six different parts of the museum because it's just so interconnected to a lot of our maritime history. Gosh, yeah. and I know you are quite the historian. I have learned a lot mostly from the Maritime Museum, really? from walking around the museum with our docents in the early days. Uh, you know, I was just telling somebody, I knew nothing about our local maritime history when I started that job. When was that? How long 2007. ago? 2007, so uh, oh, in February gee. 2007. And so, uh, and, and I started as Director of Development, but I've been the Executive Director since 2008. And, and you know, I was going to our lectures, uh, listening to our docents, and of course, reading a lot of the great books that are, have been written about our, our local history and then being part of our wonderful education program. So yeah. uh, that's been, it's been a learning experience for me. That's great. <laughs> so, so tell us about your education programs. So, uh, you know, our base one that we have been doing since 2001, and we, in 2020, will be celebrating 20 year anniversary. We opened really? in July of 2000. Wow. Mm -hmm. And since the 2001, we have been bringing in a ship called the Spirit of Dana Point from the Ocean Institute yes. in Dana Point. Uh, and local fourth graders who are studying their California history mm -hmm. read an abridged version of Two Years Before the Mass oh, by gosh. Richard Henry Dana, Jr., whose very first stop was right here in Santa Barbara when he came around uh, Alta, California. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, and, uh, and he was not very impressed with Santa Barbara back then. <laughs> he, it was a little dusty and, and uh, a lot of, <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh, yeah, so, but uh, that book is just such a great story, a great part of our local history, and so the fourth graders uh, read an abridged version of that, do a tour of our museum with our docents, and then oh. spend the night on that ship oh, that is living so the life cool. of an 1830 sailor. <laughs> uh -huh, great, uh, especially for kids with language or development oh. issues because it's all hands-on. They each have a different job. They have to uh, be a first mate, so they have to give orders, so they learn leadership skills, oh, listening skills, speaking skills, teamwork, self-esteem, uh, all, all that and, uh, and, and more. And for a lot of these kids, it's uh, a, a life-changing experience. In fact, we had one uh, young lady who, you know, 10 years old, does this program, later did about a 10-day trip with her father on a ship with no engine, where she had to learn 150 different lines and, and rigging, the names and uses oh, of all the different lines and rigging for the ship. And then she wrote a novel at age, I think, 17, about an English captain during the time of Lord Nelson, uh, uh, and, and had it published. So that's pretty amazing. And before that program, she had no interest in maritime history or ships or anything like that. God. So are these kids just from the Santa Barbara area or are they from all over? Santa Barbara County. So okay. we work with kids uh, countywide and we deal with that program directly with the schools uh, because they have to start the program right from opening week of school. Uh, some of the teachers put their kids into their different groups because they have five or six different groups depending on the size of the classroom. And we work really closely with the teachers on that. 
And then we do a marine science program every January, February. Well, those kids might be a little bit older, up to sixth grade. Uh -huh. We work sometimes with the after school groups like the Housing Authority, mm -hmm. Girls Inc., Boys and Girls Clubs, but also some classrooms. And then they actually go out on the water in a local fishing boat oh, wow. and they study marine biology. So I they'll put an they otter trap that. down, collect marine life, talk about it, feel it, touch it, put it back in the water, uh, look at zooplankton and micro, uh, under a microscope, talk about the ocean food web, what happens when you lose one species, how it affects others. Uh, and so that's been a great program, and we've uh, been expanding that. It's up to three weeks now uh, with a local fishing boat. Three weeks? Mm -hmm. Gosh. And some of those kids are coming down from Guadalupe, oh. Santa Maria, where I know last year we had a class of 17 kids. 16 had never been on a boat. Oh, man. Some of these kids, even in Santa Barbara, have not even seen the ocean. Yeah, so, I have uh, heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what an experience. Imagine that being on a boat for your first time. On the overnight program, those 10-year-olds, some of them have never been away from home for the night. Mm. Uh, so they learn a lot in a sh very, very short amount of time. And then we also do a program called Ocean Connections, where we um, uh, work with local marine biologists, Holly Loheis, mm -hmm. who's, uh, if you know Holly, she mm -hmm. worked with Jean-Michel Cousteau yes. for 20 plus years. Uh, and she either goes out on a boat with some of the kids, walks along our coastline, talks about our marine ecology, uh, and then they watch a film about plastics in our oceans, and oh. then they work with an artist named uh, Sandra Weiss, and they write a love letter to the sea as to oh. why we should keep our oceans clean. Oh, God! And then some of those letters have been presented to world leaders at climate conferences all around the world wow. through Sandra, or uh, she gets uh, has a relationship with Jack Johnson, the mm -hmm, musician, mm -hmm. or Jean-Michel Cousteau. Uh -huh. So the Golly. education programs are really important to the Maritime Museum, uh, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We do, you know, docent tours. We go out to school science nights, mm. and uh, uh, kids in past years have made their own little sailboats, and oh. they learn where you put the mast depends on <laughs> whether the boat floats or not. Yeah. Uh, the year, uh, another year, we did uh, Fresnel light, lighthouse lenses and, mm -hmm. and refracted light. The science of that. And then now we're working with buoys and navigation and teaching them port and starboard and how do you navigate out of the channel. And I can tell you love every minute of Absolutely. it. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Although I'm not very good at the navigation, I have to take that one myself. <laughs> but the history and the science of it, yeah. It's, it's you know, we live in, a, in the Santa Barbara Channel. is special throughout the yeah. world. You know, it's called the Galapagos of the Pacific. Um, it's just such a special place. The islands are so uh, seldom visited, and they're special, and there's history there, uh, and there's such abundant marine life in our channel. Uh, it, we live in a very special place. I know we you, do. We know that, but we don't really know all the mysteries of our channel. Yeah. And I know that at the museum, you um, you host a lot of events, or at least you provide the venue, mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful place to have an event. Absolutely, so we're getting ready to uh, host every year the awards ceremony for the Parade of Lights. Oh, We've of been, course, uh, uh, yeah. Home to the Santa Barbara Chamber of Commerce uh, mm -hmm. annual holiday party for quite a few years. Nice. Uh, sailing Club and, and Power Squadron ha usually has a holiday party with us. Uh, we've been having SCAPE, the Sal Southern California Artists for Protecting the Environment. Oh, nice. Uh, the last two years has been at our museum. We've done pop-up events with the Sea Glass uh, uh, Festival Group. Oh, oh, that's um, good. Boy, I mean, I'm sure I'm missing a few. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All year round, we're doing events. Yeah, there's always yeah. something going on there. There is, uh, oh, all the time, all the time, oh. absolutely. Makes, makes it fun. It's never uh, boring down there. So do you folks use volunteers? Oh my gosh, we would not be around without our volunteers. So you know, on, on our fourth floor is the visitor center. Mm -hmm. So that's a collaboration between the Maritime Museum, the city of Santa Barbara, who owns our building, the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuaries and National Park Service. Wow. So if you have a passport book with the National Park Service, we'll stamp it on the fourth floor. And uh, if you wanna be a volunteer, that is the best place because that view on our fourth floor, I love the uh, courthouse tower. Uh, the clock tower, but the fourth floor at, at the Maritime Museum is the best view in around because there's always something going out on the harbor. Yeah. If it's not too foggy, you can see out to the islands, all the way down to Point Magoo. And the volunteers there have learned a lot about the Channel Islands and, and what it's like to go out there. Uh, and there's sometimes a little webcam of uh, underwater cam from the Anacap Island. Uh, it's a great uh, volunteer oh. opportunity. And then we also have a 102-year-old sport fishing yacht 
that's all crew is all volunteers on that. Oh. Uh, we have docents and docent training annually, usually in January. We do a 10 week uh, docent training program. Oh, and gosh. so those kids, uh, those kids, those docents, we have some young folks in our program, uh, get to work with st school tours, the spirit uh -huh. overnight program, things like that. Uh, yes, and, there, and there's much more, a lot more volunteer opportunities as well. Golly, so I would imagine if somebody wants to find out how to sign up to be a volunteer, or I bet you even accept financial donations. We will do that on occasion, yes, absolutely. Yes. And membership, you can become a oh, member of the museum. Oh, become a member, yes. And that, you, know, you get free admission, you get well over $100 worth of discounts around the harbor, uh, uh, and special invitations to previews of our exhibit openings. Uh, we do a monthly lecture series and our members get uh, a free admission to that, or not free admission, but invited to a little wine and cheese party oh, beforehand. Very nice. Uh, and the lectures are awesome. Uh, and yeah, there's a ton of member benefits. So on our website, yes. spmm.org, yes. uh, is information about our hours, about becoming a volunteer, about membership, uh, our donors. So we have a, a group called our Navigator Circle members. Yeah. That's a thousand dollars a year or more annual giving, mm -hmm. and then we have folks who are in our flagship society. What means they have designate us in their plan giving. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and so we do special events for them as well. We recently took a group out to Vandenberg Air Base oh. to where the seven Navy uh, destroyers crashed within five minutes of each other oh. uh, in 1923. Uh, yeah. and we also took a group out on the Shearwater, the NOAA research vessel, to work with a guy named uh, Dirk Rosen, who was doing ROV research and counts of the marine protected areas to see if those marine protected areas around our islands are helping to revive the sea life there. And so some of our, our donors got to go out with them and actually steer the ROV and take some photos, and that was a great experience. It was amazing. Wow. So yeah, so for our members, we try to do special things, and for especially for our bigger supporters, our Navigator Circle members, uh, we try yeah. to do some fun events with them. Uh, I'll bet you get requests from all over the place for teachers or parents or whoever to bring their kids to the Santa Barbara mm -hmm. Maritime Museum, mm -hmm. oh, and not yeah. just from our area. Oh no, we get visitors from all over the world, absolutely. Um, uh, and you know, even the visitor center on the fourth floor gets folks from all over the world. Uh, we get about 40,000 visitors a year oh, wow. to the museum. We also rent the museum out for events, weddings, things like yeah. that. And I would say uh, for de uh, regular daily admissions, uh, I think this, uh, we, I, I know we have this information, two-thirds of our visitors are probably from out of town. Oh, or, okay. Uh, yeah, and then we have regular members who are coming back all the time. It's a great, we have a great children's area. Mm. Uh, so for young families, uh, kids ages two to seven, we always have activities for the kids. We have a treasure map where they can go explore the museum and answer questions and get a prize and pick the prize out of our treasure chest. Uh, um, arts and craft activities, things like that all the time. Dress up for the kids. You can walk around as a, a sailor or a <laughs> mermaid or whatever. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so great. always uh, something. And we just started doing a month, uh, annual event for our members with the Sea Center called Mermaids and Buccaneers, where if you're a member at either one on that one day, you get free admission to both. Well, so. that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we do well, a, a rum raiser too in, in uh, August. Oh, a rum raiser. Mm, yeah, you know, sailors, well, uh, that was part of their daily rations was a, a, a certain amount of rum, and then they started watering it down and calling it grog, so we, oh gosh. we celebrate that with a uh, rum raiser every year. Right. Well, we have just a little bit less than a minute left. Do you have anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Uh, well, you know, I think the, we're all about the rich history of our channel and mm. educating everybody about of that history and we are creating that history even today and so we want to celebrate our rich connection to the sea uh, and especially the waters right around us so uh, that is so great. i hope you come visit us and, and oh, we didn't yeah. even mention the 18 foot tall first order fresnel lens from point conception oh Lighthouse. yes that is so and if you beautiful. haven't seen anything else at the oh maritime museum oh, come yeah. see that because absolutely that is a work of art yeah it is and save thousands and thousands of lives yeah well greg Thank you for just bringing this treasure to us every day, and thank you for being on our show today. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.